Did you see the Genshin GameSpot interview? All right. Genshin Impact developers talk the endgame content and welcoming newcomers. We spoke with the developers behind Genshin to learn more about what's coming. Uh, 3.1 update uh, was recently live. We asked about endgame content, resin caps, costumes, and more. In the response, the developers touch on what's currently being worked on, as well as potential ideas for the future. This article is either going to make me rage, or I'm going to be like, oh, hey, what? This is going to be interesting. I wonder how much they will reveal on this. Versions 3.0, 3.1 are expected uh, one week shorter than usual. Um, that's... I guess to keep up with the timeline, but I honestly am really liking that the the updates are like five weeks instead of six weeks. It feels a lot more rapid that, you know, we're going from 3.1 to 3.2, all that stuff. I actually am having a lot more fun because of it. It feels rapid fire and good. So I like that personally. I don't, you know, it probably won't k uh, stay like this. Will it return to its former pace? Version 3.0 to the end of 3.2. The length of each update has been shortened to five weeks, but the shorter update cycle will not influence the quality. Please stay tuned. So they didn't say it'll go back, but the five weeks is very nice. Currently, the Spyro Abyss is the only endgame for content uh, for players of high adventure ranks. Are there any plans to release new permanent endgame content? Spiral Abyss is one of the most effective ways to test their party compositions and combat strength. If we design another type of permanent endgame that is similar to the Spiral Abyss, it might end up creating excessive anxiety for our players. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the Not everyone is interested in Musk Reef. What? Just like the TCG that will be unveiled in 3.2, we are also working on designing more interesting gameplay in the future. As an open world game, Genshin Impact has a natural compatibility with various types of gameplay, which gives us confidence in the long term operation. What? It's gonna give, give our players anxiety to have a place to test all of our characters and artifacts? What? It's gonna give us a reason to play the game. Yeah, Musk Reef is the Spiral Abyss, if you guys don't know what that is. This isn't a new location or thing they're working on. But this also means if we design another type of permanent endgame, means we haven't even considered crafting any new endgame. This means they haven't even considered designing anything new. There's nothing new coming. There will be no uh, endgame. There will be nothing. Um, it, it will be mini games, And you know what? I've accepted that Genshin is, is fun to mess around with. I'm genuinely having fun today because we've been messing around uh, we did the, the Spiral Abyss that's available. We did our ka -ching. Will I get bored? I I'm sure many of us will. What is the point of having this, right? Long term, if there's no end game. But I would be lying if I said I haven't been fun dicking around with ka -ching, checking out uh, her talents, getting artifacts for her, building her up, and using her. It's just after I've used her for a bit, I'll say, okay, that was fun. And I will need new toys to play with, new characters to play with, to test out and have fun with. But... If there's never going to be any more endgame, there's going to be a, a a lifespan for this game that's, that's you know, for me, I won't be able to stay sane playing it and we'll probably play other stuff. But 3.0, 3.1, super fun. So we take a break, we come back, we, we test out the new stuff. But let's be honest here. I think a lot of people are interested in the Spiral Abyss and beyond. I think a lot of people not being interested is because they're bored. I know that some people are not there yet. I know that some people can't beat it, but I mean, I think that they need something to... To obtain. But here's the other thing you have to really think about is just like the TCG that we unveiled, we're also working on designing more interesting gameplay in the future. They're more interested in different experiences and mini games and things like tag that might be fun and throwing things at the wall to see what sticks over combat events. That's the way I'm viewing that. It's just like the TCG. We're super proud of the TCG. We want this trading card game in. It's different. It's fun. It's unique. We want more fun, unique things. That will definitely, definitely be the focus. Mini games, for sure. Genshin Impact is going into year two with an ever-expanding roster. Some older characters might be left behind as power creep settles in and newer characters become strong choices. Is there a plan to potentially upgrade old characters and make them more viable? If a character is only assessed by a single dimension of numerical strength, power creep could indeed be an issue. However, in Genshin Impact, the rules of gameplay are more impactful than how strong a character is. Therefore, new battlegrounds, new challenging levels, or even new team builds all have potential to bring a new life to existing content. Okay, sure. But if my Shang Ling hits harder than my Diluc and I need a fire character, then I will use Shang Ling over Diluc. And no activity unless Using your ability, your E ability three times gives you 500% more damage. There will be no reason to use Diluc. You can only do damage because you have a pyro infusion. Okay, well, yeah, maybe then I'll use Diluc. But, um, no, no, there's no rules of gameplay for the most part that will, like, no, this is, I, I just don't agree with that. The rules of gameplay are more impactful than how strong a character is. No. <laughs> how strong the character is is gonna be the reason I use them or I don't use them. There's a reason why there's tier lists in a meta. And what are you possibly gonna do in a new battleground? Unless you're putting up all the enemies on ledges and Ganyu is the best 
in slot, right? Or Amber headshotting people. You'll never use Amber. I'm never going to use Amber over any other pyro unit in the game unless you're putting everyone up on a ledge and I need to snipe them off to then attack them. Then yes, okay, Amber's going to shoot up in the meta a little bit. This is telling me old characters, if they're not good now, they'll never be good. Unless something like Dendro happens. Unless something happens like, you know, Xing Cho to Pyro, right? If you look at Xing Cho and Pyro or Yelon and Pyro, Right, if we look at Dendro to Electro, unless there's a, a game-changing character that really changes the functions, old characters are gonna be what they are, new characters are gonna be what they are. The entire post so far is Copium saying, our game is fun, enjoy it, we're gonna do lots of fun stuff, don't stress out about the numbers. And that's okay, it, it is what it is. The introduction of Dendro has created plenty of new elemental reactions, some elements have been left out. Uh, are there discussions regarding adding the new reactions? For example, uh, a Geo and Dendro reaction. We have no such plans at the time being. Dendro is what it is, as the reactions are what they are. With easy and open rules, given some time, players will uh, come discover new ways of optimizing, or, or of developing builds. This is the fun of the game. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, I missed this part. There are other ways to increase the fun for players rather than simply increasing the complexity of game rules. Gamers, we're not five years old. We can all read and figure out what reactions do. Like throwing us, throwing more reactions in and giving us more tools is not going to make us be like, oh, I don't know how to play anymore. I don't know. I don't, I don't really agree with that. The balancing of gameplay rules is part of the team's long-term uh, focus. Oh, the team's yeah, experience dude. and learning for feedback is, in the long run are all important to maintain the focus. Okay, sure. But I think a lot of us have been getting, giving feedback on the end game and you have no plans of doing that. I think a lot of us have been getting, giving feedback on resin, and there's no plans of changing that, I'm sure. The world to VAT continues to expand, giving players so many more challenges to complete daily between domains, bosses, and ley lines. Is there a chance we can see a cap increase? Domains, bosses, and ley lines are important means to farm a character uh, and, you know, essential materials. Meanwhile, we're also providing more options for gamers to obtain character development items. For example, many character and weapon materials can be obtained and redeemed from events that we run periodically. So no, they will not give you more resin. They will not let you play more Daily, they want you to FOMO into events to get it. So the answer is no, there will never be more resin. So we know this now, there will be no end game, there will be no resin, ever. No more extra resin, no more end game, ever. It's, it, it, we're talking even into the end of um, Natlin, into the end of Shnezaya, it's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna get mad about it anymore. They have specifically said, I'm not gonna hope you anymore. If I see an update, if I see an Archon quest that looks good, I'll play them. If a mini game gives me a cool weapon that I want to do, I'll play it. But I am not going to stress about it anymore because I, they're saying it right here. Which means, my gamer dudes, the hopium is now gone. I now need to look at this game for what it is. And if there's a content drought and there's nothing to say, I will, I'm going to go play Neopets. I'm going to go play some, something else, right? We can come back and enjoy this as a community. That's okay. But stop worrying about your artifacts. I still care about my artifacts. I want to upgrade this because it's satisfying for me and I want to hit hard. And I was just talking earlier, I want to get these artifacts and get really, really good ones so I have multiple tools. I'm really happy with some of these. I'm not going to perfect it more than this. Like this is a perfect artifact for me. It's got EM, ER. I'm not going to freak out any more than this, but I want to get lots of tools and pieces of the puzzle because it, it is satisfying to me. And then when new content comes out, if I take a break, I come back. I've got all the, I've got all the keys and the tools and the, and the locks and the everything I need to uh, have fun in the new content. That's the way I'm looking at it. But I am going to very much so get a good set of this. I'm going to move on to another set. I'm going to start building some of these other characters like my Kuki Shinobi. I'm going to take her up to 80 or 90. I'm going to take her up to 80 or 90. I'm going to take her up to 80 or 90. I'm going to take him and her and stop min-maxing artifacts because why? I stomp everything in the game. I can stop everything in the game with two characters. I can stomp everything in the game with one good character and a level 50 character, and there is just no reason anymore. And there's no hopium down the road that I will need it. I can completely let go of that stress on my brain and just accept this for a mini game fun game. If that's the case, I'm gonna find it harder and harder to care about the meta or recommend characters. In fact, my coverage of the game may change now because I'm gonna say they have officially announced that there will never be end game. If you want this character, he's cool, he slams, he jams. If you like these characters that look fun, get them. And then the next video is, does this guy look fun to you? And you want these characters? Get them. Wow, these weapons are pretty awesome. It's risky, but if you want them, do whatever the f you want because 
At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. At, at the end of the day, do you, do you want do you want to do some of this? Let's top up. No, I'm just kidding. Do you want to wish on this banner? I don't, I, I don't care. Because at the end of the day, if you build those characters, that's all you're gonna need. I'm, I'm still gonna recommend characters, but definitely, uh, definitely is like limiting my my. I I I reading this. This is okay now. So you know what? Now I'm starting to get like frustrated in my brain. I, I'm I'm trying to be like kind of positive, but uh, I'm not gonna lie. Reading this, I actually think I don't value my account anymore. I don't I don't care anymore about my account. This is actually like a really sick feeling. Um, I actually have almost no care anymore about this uh, game. I think I'm going through a breakup right now internally because like I I, I did care about like my characters having um like five star weapons and like oh I I I landed that five star weapon like this is so crazy. I I actually think that I don't care. I just uh, I'm I'm gonna level some characters up. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with them, but I almost have zero not respect for my account I, it's like uh it's like i i guess it's kind of just like what's the point anymore I, I i we've kind of known what's the point but for some reason now i just like have no sweat about it that being said yeah maybe that's the best word is ambition i have no no ambition for it there's some things that i'm gonna want to you know test out and have fun but but yeah, it's almost like my ambition is gone now, which is <laughs> post nut clarity. No, it, it, it's, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's just surprising to hear that. I, uh, guys, I'm not quit. I, I enjoy the game. I'm going to cover the new characters. So what you're saying is you're going to pull for Sino? I know, I still want Nahida. I still want to get Nahida first because she looks like a fun tool. Do you know what? Okay, let me address this. If you want to play Genshin Impact optimally and you want to have fun, get tools, get pieces of the pie. That's how I'm going to describe it is Dendro MC is a tool. He allows a lot of electro, or, uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, electro reactions, but he's a, a pretty good Dendro unit. He's a piece of the pie. If you have him and you build him, you're going to be able to do lots of stuff. So you've got like one tool, right? Um, someone like Fischl could be really good. You know, maybe that's a tool. Kazuha, I would consider a tool. He, he is like uh, an elemental damage booster. He can shred defenses with his, uh, his artifact. He's another tool. Like if you have some of these pieces of the pie, freeze comps, energy recharge, right? Maybe uh, you want a Hydro DPS, or maybe you want a Cryo DPS, or maybe you want a Pyro DPS. But as long as you have a couple of these tools, right? A healer allows free com freeze comps to happen. Um, a little bit of healing, tankiness, allows Pyro reactions to happen. You know, big shields, or big shields. As long as you're covering some of these, you beat the game. You will be able to beat all the end game. Just have fun. Don't freak out about if this girl is better than this guy, or if this guy is more valuable than her. Don't worry about that anymore. Just get the different tools that seem like they'll uh, they'll be different from what you already have, and I think you're gonna have a better time in Genshin Impact. Let's keep reading though and see what they say. I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent. So no more resin. There's no plans of more resin. New players uh, are have been a bit lost when starting the Summertime Odyssey event because they missed Fischl and Mona's first introductions. This also happened when Scaramouche showed up in Inazuma. That's actually a really good question. That is true. There's been some story beats that happen where if you weren't around for the FOMO event, too bad. We're aware of this issue and we're looking for a solution. On one hand, stories are limited time events. She'll never become barriers to understanding and playing the Archon quests. But like... A little bit? Would you guys agree with that statement? The limited time events shall never become barriers to understand the Archon quests? I feel like there is a bit of like, there has been a bit of lore, even with the Scaramouche stuff. And some of the things they said, I, I mean, maybe you just won't have as much of an understanding, but I feel like there's like a, a, a bit. On the other hand, we're working on beginning, uh, on the beginner tutorial adjustments, uh, client capacity optimization, intelligent, uh, management of past content and other optimizations. As our technology and capacity grow, uh, we hope to have some solutions for this. This means it's not going to get fixed for a long time. Just if if you want the warning, this is developer talk for you're going to have to wait um, like two years. That's fine. It'll happen eventually. Costumes are added into the game last year, providing new stylish looks. Uh, how likely is it that the traveler uh, becomes a recipient of one of those? It's an intriguing idea to design outfits and accessories for regional characteristics for the Traveler. We don't have anything to share in that front, but we're always considering this. This means oh, one to two years for a Traveler costume. The, the Traveler will almost never get a costume. They're going to work on other ones. My only thing is I'm shocked that they haven't done more skins. They could make so much money from skins, and they just like are really slow on it. It's, all, it's almost bizarre. I mean, I don't want them to milk us for more money, but as a business, they, you, you'd think they'd do more. As a follow-up to the previous question, Aether and Lumine seem to get uh, fun accessories during quests, like a mask or a flower crown. They can only be worn for short periods of time. What about turning on accessories? We have been discussing this question within the team and other ideas similar to it. However, we don't have any details. 
Okay, so this is not happening for a long time, almost ever. On top of Genshin Impact, Hoyoverse is currently working on Hon Honkai Impact 3rd, Zenless Zone Zero, and Honkai Star Rail. There's been crossovers between Genshin and Honkai with Kaching and Fischl. I actually have Fischl on my Honkai Impact account. Any plans to do the reverse? In terms of characterization, we wish the channel more effort and attention to creating characters for the world of Genshin Impact. If there are new opportunities for crossover in the future, we will share them. AKA, no plans of crossovers from Honkai into this game. We want to focus on building the characters in World of Genshin because it makes us $3 billion. There's no other stuff. Every answer so far has been depressing. Wait, is that the end? Is that it? Every single answer was like, yeah, we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> that was kind of depressing. I have lost... <laughs> I've lost all of my, like, drive to upgrade my account. I'm still going to do it because, like, I want to see where this Archon quest goes. But my... I'm very reward-driven as a, as a player. I think I've said this in the past, is, like, I do a lot of these events. Not because I'm having fun. Like, like win trace and tag. Some people love that, and I get it. Literally, the only play reason I play the tag is for Primo Gems, because I know it leads to characters and more tools. I am hyper reward driven. And it's one of the reasons why with Destiny, I've quit, is because I don't find many of the rewards worth it. A lot of the gear that I get is not an upgrade, it's never an upgrade. And so it doesn't feel like I have a reason to play. And so I am very reward driven and, you know, things like Primo Gems, I play it because I want to progress. But now, because my account is so good, and I have so many tools, I discussed this earlier, I have all the tools. I'm less inclined to care about a random four-star weapon that's not an upgrade, and the event that has that weapon. There are less characters in this game that excite me that I want, that are a tool for me to use, because I can already beat everything, and I know it will never get harder. It will never, it will literally never get harder than now, and I can already stomp it. My urge to min-max is almost nothing. And because my urge to min-max is almost nothing, here is the big thing that I'm finding. I want to get a good set of this. I said earlier, I want to get a good set of this. So I have this as a tool. I like the idea of having this as a tool. But <laughs> if I know that I can just slap on a generalist set like this and stomp everything, I'm less interested in grinding this. And if I can use a generalist set like this, with good substats, maybe not this one, I'm less inclined to farm the new, the new art, like any of the new artifact sets. And a good example of this is, I, I think, is for Ayato. But the Ayato set is like super, super niche. And maybe this is best in slot for someone, but it's not good enough for me to care to farm it over the Hydro set. And like something like this is like, yes, I could get it and get a working set, but it's not good enough. In Division 2, there was a, a gun called the Custom P416. The Custom P416 was the best assault rifle in the game. And getting better stats on that assault rifle meant that I could beat the content faster to farm other stuff faster. And, and, and there was value in getting that upgrade. And I was excited about it because I could clear it faster. I could get more upgrades and maybe different things, test new weapons. And I was so focused and driven. I just want a new one. I want a better one. I want to improve it. I want to be able to do the raid better. I want to get this freaking gun, right? I was so hyper-focused on it, I was so excited on it. And I got one, and it was a slight upgrade. But I knew it could get better, I still hunted it down. Because I knew that I could get faster, I could do the raids quicker, I could carry people because I do so much damage, and, and like, there was that drive inside to like, get that gun and get the improvement, and, and I would craft different, you know, I, I was like always crafting in the game and trying to get upgrades so I could do the content better. Because I knew there was raids and more raids coming, and I just wanted to be the best. I now, am the best. I am the best. I've beaten everything. I've beaten it with two characters. I could beat it with almost one character. I won. And now, I almost don't want to play. I had Copium for for two years that, well, you know, maybe after Shneznaya. I knew it probably wouldn't happen, but finding out officially is like a real punch in the gut. I guess it's time to start looking for what's the future gonna look like. I feel like One Punch Man. Yeah, I'm Saitama right now. What am I psycho? I'm 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 one punch man. I'm I'm like purposeless. I'm not trying to be rude. I I think I've been relatively positive considering, but I'm just telling you how I feel. Is like wow, it's over. It's it's kind of like we have our answer, and I don't love the answer. I like okay. I know this sounds 
fucking weird, boys. I'm like kind of mourning right now. Like, like I, I, I'm actually going through something here. It's like, it's because now it's like the, the potential, the, the potential I've always had and like this like sick, I, I didn't think, oh, holy shit, I'm like actually getting like emotional because now I know that the thing that like probably never would happen, but like maybe, is dead. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not trying to roast. Like, I, I know that there's still some really good things. I would still recommend this game to everyone. I would still recommend Genshin to anyone. There's going to be more quests and chests and things to do. And like, uh, if you start today, there's lots of fun stuff. But the game has essentially been killed for me. Like, I, I feel like my, my, my favorite game just got murdered. Uh, imagine if you played League of Legends every day. And then, you know, there's five characters that you like. And they just deleted all five of them. And it's like, okay, well, I can learn other ones. And they're like, oh, by the way, League of Legends isn't a MOBA anymore. Um, it's only Teamfight Tactics. And it's like, well, I, I like League of Legends, but I don't want to play Teamfight Tactics. I feel like that's essentially what has happened, is they've said, the piece of the game that you like, here's a, here's a taste, but that's all you get. And we're going to focus on, on literally all the other things. I'm actually getting, like, emotional. Like, I, like I'm like, like, I honestly could cry. <laughs> like, it feels like I kind of wasted my time. I mean, I didn't waste my time because I, I enjoyed hanging... Holy fuck. I feel like I had fun hanging out with you, but now I feel like kind of dumb. Because like you have to understand, this is like kind of my like my job. Like this is kind of my right. This is part of my identity a little bit. Is like I'm like a Genshin guy, and um, like this game that I have always like kind of hoped for. And like I can't believe how emotional I'm getting. It's it's like whatever. It's still fun. Like I'm still gonna play it. But I I it's like all this ho hope that I had is uh, kind of gone. Like I I just feel like kind of like dumb. I just feel like I've spent so many hours. Like, it's kind of like a waste. It's like, why did I do this? Like, I know, no, I, and I, I shouldn't say that because it's like, I had fun adventuring with you guys. And like, I'm it's not like I'm even going to quit, but it's just like, I, I just really feel like I lost something here. It's just a game. I, I know it's just a game, but, but it's just a game for you guys. I've made like a thousand videos on this game. It's not just a game for me. It's like a, it's a, like a passion. It's, it's uh, something I've fostered a community with. I've grown with this game. It's changed my life. It's, it's my favorite game. I've one of my favorite games I've ever played. And I feel like it's almost wasted. Like it, it'll never be the game it deserves to be. It's still a good game. It still has campaign and reasons to play it. I understand that more people will probably enjoy it because of the changes they are making in the future. The accessibility to the game, it's probably a less successful game if they make it sweaty for me. I get that. That's that's a that's a greedy part of me is like, I want, I want endgame. That probably isn't what is the most enjoyable for the most players, but everyone's going to be greedy. Everyone's going to do do what they think is best. And in the back of my mind, I was like, it'll it'll pay off eventually. The grind, the saving, all these things, it, it, it's gonna pay off. I'm gonna have the craziest account. I'm gonna smash the end game. They're gonna add the end game. I'm gonna be one of the first people to complete it. I'm mourning, I'm mourning that. It sounds so dumb. I, it, it, this is a first world problem, but this is my job a little bit. And, and the game kind of died for me today, or at least, the twisted version that I had in my head died. I, I kind of knew that it would be like this, but but the confirmation it feels kind of kind of gross. I need some I need some counseling. <laughs>